Bravissimo. How are you there? I thought we were just doing the sound check. I took it seriously anyway, but I, yeah. I thought it was a, yeah. a sound check. That's a nice oh, setting. I, everyone could hear what I was doing. Oh, no. no. Yes. <laughs> that's that's a great setting. Yeah. Um, now, you're, because yes, you're, I, play, you're playing the piano right now, um, a, a, so the camera is kind of uh, far away. Now, uh, I'm going to pull you a little closer to me when you talk. So can you move yourself a little bit? Uh, Absolutely. Towards the piano. No, the other way, dear. Uh, way. Let's see. Yeah. 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 Is it a, can you can you yeah. move more? Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> You're still very small. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. If if uh, yeah yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, he was moving, and I will hope now you I'm close enough to the camera. Yeah. Uh, definitely, I, I I was careful about my hair. I took a shower, so <laughs> hopefully you, you can see me well. <laughs> but it, yeah. It yeah. Event, you know, so it actually deserves this kind of attention. Yes, very nice. So uh, you have Good a morning. very fancy. Great. You, have a, you have a fancy setting. <laughs> what so and so how are you from uh tell me is it fernando altero how to spell your name yes yes that's exactly your pronunciation is great is it otero how do i really need to otero. pronounce uh you can feel free to pronounce it the way you <laughs> tell yes Anyway, yeah, I was so, um, so I'm going to usually uh, I introduce my guests, um, uh, read a little bit ab about their biography. And um, by the way, um, Fernando, you have a really awesome, awesome website. I was like, you're, you're so thorough. Your website has long bio, medium sized bio, short bio, uh, you know, in, in language of Korean, Chinese, English, whatever, you know, so it's just so amazing. Great, great, great website. You, sh you guys should check his uh, website out. Uh, Fernando Altero is a Grammy winning uh, Argentine composer, pianist, and vocalist based in New York City. He has been described by many critics as a classically trained virtuoso pianist and composer who develops his own style by blending elements of classical contemporary music and improvisation while acknowledging tango as a starting point. So, uh, other important uh, elements of uh, Fernando's um, biography is uh, um, uh, Fernando has recorded 16 albums as a solo artist and performer, and he performs uh, 100 international concerts yearly. And so, so impressive. So please uh, read more of uh, Fernando's uh, biography in the description of this um, uh, YouTube uh, channel. So tell us a little bit about uh, what was the piece you just played, please. Um, actually, I was checking the piano and I played <laughs> with something. Uh, <laughs> Something that it's a yeah an extract from from one piece called manifestation, um, and some other passages from other things, uh, just in order to go through the keyboard, like uh, <laughs> the Tom and Jerry cartoons that you know that you go <laughs> out the keyboard and you run, and then suddenly I saw you there and I s said, "Wow, I was live." <laughs> 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 yes, you're alive. There's nowhere to escape. So uh, I wanted to uh, thank you to uh, talk to me because um, uh, our friend Jeffrey, uh, uh, who works, I think, I guess, uh, who is your publicist or manager or uh, any above of those, uh, introduced you to me. And 
I, I am so thankful because otherwise I would not know your music. So I, I was listening to your music and watching your videos and you have like, you know, so many, so many, uh, you know, video clips, uh, video uh, stuff on YouTube. And it was just incredibly uh, impressive. So uh, I love tango music. By the way, um, my family and I, we went to uh, uh, your hometown uh, in 2000 something, 13, I think. Yeah. So, so, so tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Usually I like to know my guests, how, you know, their, their childhood or how their, uh, you know, musical training came from. Well, my childhood, I was very young during my childhood. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was born to par uh, my parents were immigrants somehow. Well, they were born here, actually. But uh, my family, as usually happens in Argentina, uh, was made of immigrants from Europe. In this case, mainly France, France and Spain, but mainly France. And there was always music on the air. You know, the five members of the family were musicians. Um, my grandmother was an opera singer, my mother as well. She was also a composer, actress. And as, an, as a singer, she had a very nice career, international, international career. And for me, it was something natural to be involved with music from the very beginning of the day until the last minute. You know, music was always there, instruments were all around. And for me, instead of playing with toys, which I also did, of course, um, I would play with instruments. And I started receiving vocal lessons at five and, uh, and piano lessons as well. Mm, I was a very, let's say, energetic child uh as my mother used to say i'm using her definition of me um now we, we usually say bipolar or something like that but <laughs> a few, a few, but a few years ago it was uh, uh, about um uh, saying well this child needs some extra attention so let's find him a club so he can do some sports and spend that energy and music was perfect for that, uh, for my mother as a babysitting resource. And the rest is uh, I was always involved in musical situations of listening, performing, going to concerts, going to see my mother's concerts, uh, other artists, uh, receiving friends at home, family also. Uh, who were involved in music deeply, let's say professionally or as listeners. And it, music was the common language and was the main subject of conversation. Um, I never thought about anything else except being a musician for me. Uh, it's not something that I, I really made a choice. It just happened. Wow. So what is your story of uh, coming to America? Well, in my case, it's, uh, I was not um, coming to New York because I had any master plans about my career, study, work, or any professional development or anything. Um, it was a romantic situation, the one oh. who led me to New York. <laughs> And, and I stayed in New York just because of that. Um, of course, it was a good move in terms of uh, the development of what I was doing already. I, I had already some albums done. I was already touring. Um, I'm playing my, my compositions, the music I had to offer since I was a teenager, when I first had my first project was when I was 14, let's say when I put my first group together, I'm, say, I'm using the word, word my, and sometimes it's kind of weird, 
because it's like saying, you know, that mindness, you know, that it's my, my group, my music. But, well, it's, a, it's a, the way I can define this. And, and I started with the first band. I, I'm using the word band because it was actually a band, not, not even an ensemble of group, which sounds with a, some solemnity in a way. And I was already active as a musician. When I got to New York, uh, I was already um, doing my thing. Mm -hmm. You're already established. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm still not established. <laughs> <laughs> I got to establish myself every morning in front of the mirror when I said, oh, it's you again. <laughs> again I have to establish you somehow, you know? Today, I promise I will. <laughs> I mean, it's what happens. Mm. It's in my checklist, establish mm. myself. It's one of the points in my checklist that I need to check and someday I will or not. Mm. So, uh, you, would you like to play something for us? You, you're, yes, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna- I wanna hear some, some tango music. Oh, you wanna hear some tango? Well, uh, if you're talking about the strictly that thing, it's not exactly what I was intending to play right now. Okay, uh, you can play oh, anything. <laughs> somehow, you know, it's a, a kind of a trap I set at some point in my life and I could never escape. Uh, it's like uh, being being uh, the victim of the minds I laid. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm gonna play a piece uh, which is Prima Donna, the title, and it's... Oh, yeah. uh, Something that I wrote for my mother. And it's a, actually, I saw it has the ghost tango there. Yeah. There's a ghost. And uh, it's a one piece that I wrote intending to be close to my mother's vocabulary when writing music.
Beautiful. Thank you so much. Bravo. Bravo. Yes. So um so you uh, there is a <clears throat> there is actually a video about your album called Pre Madonna, right? Yeah. On YouTube. Yeah. Absolutely. We're gonna play that later. Okay. So I I, I love it. So now um let's talk about Let's see. Let's talk about something like a really kind of a kind of serious and, and deep. <laughs> what? So, what is the? How, how would you describe? How would you describe the purpose of music? Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, maybe if, if you ask me to define God or love, I'm gonna be. <laughs> Much more so <self> short. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah. And I, I think, well, I should start saying that I heard many times many definitions of about the purpose of music that I felt identified with. And that I felt that uh oh, it sounds to me like a true, a truth. I heard many times from Swamis, gurus, musicologists as well. Uh, music is intended to mitigate the pain. The pain. It's all about mitigating pain. Even mm. if it's uh, the person who's making music or the audience. So music exists for that purpose. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard, and I said, oh, yes, I, I really like that definition about the purpose of music. And when we're talking about mitigating the pain, it's not necessary, I think. We're saying that, oh, everything is wrong, and we need some healing, or 
pain, I understand it's not necessarily something bad. Uh, it's not a, a low emotion. I understand that it's, um, it's, it's one of the ways to improve ourselves, to wake up, to really make uh, efforts, changes in our lives to transform. So um, I'm not saying that mitigating, mitigating the pain it involves stopping developing ourselves. Um, and I think that music it's, um, gives us the connection to a state of, let's say, contemplation, meditation, which is not thinking about the absence of problems, conflicts, or anything that happens at some point that I dislike. Uh, it's a um, more receiving the chance of broadening the sky. If the sky is bigger than even if there's a few clouds there, the sunlight is still visible. And like um, widening our sky. And I, I think that music provides that. And of course, I, I understand music is essential in terms of entertainment, dance, other expressions. Um, I think it's a part of a whole expression, a bigger expression, um, which I understand it's a, it's consciousness, a, a higher level of consciousness. And I understand that music also give us the chance to access a higher level of consciousness. And it doesn't matter if it's we were talking about heavy metal or death metal or anything. It's it's not about the style. Uh, I think it's about the process, and it's about the re release of uh, emotions, thoughts, and and I also understand that music brings connection between human beings. It, it's a way to connect people. Uh, using a language that it's uh, somehow not, not a, let's say, written in a conventional way and which allows us to have different views and points of views of the same, let's say, when listening to something, um, each person will perceive it differently that, that that's, I, I think that's something beautiful that happens uh, with human beings. And there's going to be a bigger connection between them when sharing music. Well, I understand that the concert reveals exactly that kind of uh, interaction. You know, one singer or performer, let's say, or concert pianist or any anything, any expression of music, people will attend the show. They want to be connected. They want to be close to that person who's producing that sound, who's producing that expression. And also there's going to be connection between the people who are attending the concert. Uh, there's going to be a nice matter of conversation. And, and somehow sometimes I think that it's a uh, a good way to connect without points of view because it's a uh, so abstract the music that even if we try to be objective and define anything from the point of view it's going to be still very ab an abstraction so it's a, there's no points of view to defend for example um, right language without words exactly yeah. and that i think it's a, a good tool for connection in that right. sense in all senses right now you <clears throat> at very early you started um piano and you also study vocal and um 
and then I guess gradually you become a composer. And I see your compositional uh, style is a very varied. You have, you know, uh, music, uh, very Argentinian tango uh, uh, theme kind of music. And you write music for yourself, which is a solo piano. And then you write music for ensemble or for string quartet, even Kronos string quartet. So tell us a little bit about uh, your variety of your style of music, please. Well, thank you for saying that because I don't feel myself, um, let's say, scattered in different music styles. Um, I could say that I sometimes I, I think, oh, I should stop repeating myself. Um, <laughs> that in a way, I, I find that the essence is very much the same, uh, and I'm not being able to get rid of certain beliefs. Um, Sometimes I do, and that's what I call freedom. <laughs> when I get to forget who I, my, my let's say my programs, my presets, and of course the, the writing for the string quartet, the solo piano, different instruments, different expressions will lead me to certain changes in aspects which sometimes are let's say a little bit more external. It's about how the sound is going to be produced but the essence keeps very much in the in the same place uh then i'm not talking about stagnation i'm not saying that oh, oh i feel comfortable when just writing the same thing and just changing the instruments or or offering it to different performers um i'm not talking about um, repeating myself in a way that it's uh, no enjoyable for me anymore to do something because there's no surprise and there's no what I call sometimes progress. Uh, and also for the audience, I think it's uh, it's important to offer to, to, to develop something in order to offer different aspects uh, of wh what we do mm -hmm. and what I do. I I still think that um, that in every piece of music that I write, uh, I can find cer certain aspects of recurrence, recurrence. But uh, I'm I'm fine with that. I'm just trying to polish them. Mm -hmm. Shall we play a little bit about the uh, the trailer? The trailer, uh, absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah, you the trailer of Prima Donna, right? You gave it to me earlier. No? Okay, so I actually, let's see. I can um, share the screen, go there, go there. Uh, let's see. I think this is it. Hold on. How about this one? Is this the one? Yes. As a classically trained and virtuoso pianist, and also as a composer who has developed his own style with elements of classical contemporary music and improvisational jazz while using the tango as a starting point. <laughs> Prima Donna is an intimate celebration of the artistic career of Elsa Marvel, Fernando Otero's mother and musical mentor. acclaimed opera singer, composer, pianist and actress who passed away in 2010. Fernando 
tapped the sound of his native city less as a dance form than an attitude of modernist artistic curiosity. Prima Donna contains compositions for solo piano, showcasing Otero's song-like melodicism, expressiveness, and his use of wide palette of pianistic colors, but also his rhythmical intensity when performing fast tempo pieces, playing notes repeated with piston-like precision, with sudden details into daydreamy pastels. A rendition of El Portonito, Masterpiece written by Argentine icon Angel Volobo gives us an idea of how Otero can use well-known compositions in order to unleash his imagination. <laughs> Album also includes orchestral and chamber music pieces. Plus a sonata for solo violin in one movement using a full gamut of violin techniques, which the Argentine composer wrote for Nick Danielson. Throughout Prima Donna, Otero ratchets up the contemporary classical music illusions that were already in evidence on his Warner Music debut album, entitled Pagina de Buenos Aires. Based in New York, Atero has found correspondingly diverse collaborators, among them Paquito de Riva, the Kronos Quartet, Eddie Gomez and Quincy Jones. The final piece on the recording is a version of Quincy Jones's composition, The Pawnbroker, arranged by Atero. showcases the superb Quincy Jones's melodic beauty combined with Fernando's orchestral technique and pianistic language. It is a fitting end for this collection. Mi mamá siempre hablaba de lo importante que es hacer las cosas en el día, de vivir el día a día. Hablaba mucho mi mamá del día a día. Mi mamá siempre tenía en su discurso el aquí y ahora como algo fundamental. Concentrar el corazón en lo que hay que hacer hoy. The album was produced by Ruben Parra and was recorded in New York and Los Angeles. Prima Donna is a special album since it's not only about new compositions, it's also about reinventing and celebrating. Beautiful. Okay, thank you. That was beautiful. That was thank beautiful. You. Um, 
nicely. It has been a while, but I haven't seen that. That was nicely, nicely put together, a, a short kind of promotional, right? Promotional and sort of a documentary uh, um, yeah. piece. Yes. Yeah, I so, always remember. I was very surprised when I saw it for the first time, and I say, "Where did you guys take <laughs> from all these materials?" And I'm so, so yeah. grateful and happy. Um, a little bit reluctant to see myself all the time. There. <laughs> <laughs> now, the the very last shot of of the concert hall with your flyer on was that concert hall Berlin? Where is it? Um, no. Where well, is well it? there's a few different concert halls in uh, no, the last um, one the last the one. one no the last one is in oh it's in the states oh, but okay. i i don't remember what you, it is actually you were on the top and then at the bottom i noticed a turtle island string quartet you know uh, but that round uh concert hall you know reminds me of the berlin uh berlin philharmonic uh, concert hall yeah, right a yes. little little bit yeah so anyway um are you are you a very techie person? Oh, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> techie. Techie means someone <laughs> is very comfortable with technology. <laughs> so now the reason I say that is, um, uh, you know, you seem like uh, you know, pretty techie, and uh, techie means someone is very comfortable with technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So what is? <laughs> no, I thought you were you were asking me if I'm a um, good person. <laughs> And I wasn't going to say no, no, not at all. <laughs> so, Fernando, what kind of setting do you have today? Because um, a lot of time when we do streaming, uh, the instrument doesn't sound come very good. But your yours is very, very good audio wise. So, what can you share with us? Like, what do you use other than you have two cameras? Uh, yeah, there's two cameras and there's a connection to an OBS system which streams uh, directly from a mixer. You know, I see. So every, all microphones are going into a mixer and from the mixer going into the interface which goes to the computer. So that's how you're receiving the audio uh, in a different quality than just the microphone um, built in in the laptop. Yeah. Which, uh, and it was an option, but um, since you told me a couple of weeks ago, I said, well, I have to find a way to do it the best I can. I can. And then um, yeah. you perfectly know that only half an hour ago, we were swimming in the sea, you know, without any clue of what's going to happen because it was my, it's actually the first time I'm, uh, I'm doing this oh. kind of streaming using this technology. Yeah, and then I understood now. No, I'm not the responsible for the tag, but a friend of mine here is, uh, who's very, very skilled for yeah. everything. Um, and yeah, uh, we are nice. like young and young, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. he's skilled, he has all the knowledge, he has all yeah. the patience, and yeah. I'm the or the yin. I'm on the opposite side. I'm in the pink <laughs> circle, and I show the space that I'm. <laughs> I have the. Yeah. the the other qualities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah you you're lucky. I'm a good person, then I'm going to say no, no. <laughs> well, you know, it's true. And I'll tell you why. You know, because I, I had a conversation with one of my teachers a few days ago mm -hmm. uh, again. And then we, we were saying, he was saying something very interesting. Yeah. If I think myself as a good person, then I need someone to be bad. Then I need. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I'm, I'm going to separation, confrontation. I'm moving, you know, in in a state of mind, in a, in a frame of mind which lacks peace. Mm -hmm. And we need peace to be happy. So forget about thinking. Oh, I'm a, I'm good. I'm true, and you are false. No, no, forget about that. He said, "There's no need to go to the limits." So. Don't think about good actions, think about ethics, morality, think about doing something good, rendering service to people, uh, what we call karma yoga, or let's, <laughs> let's, do, yeah, let, let, let's do something good for people uh, without thinking too much about 
classifying ourselves into the, the good or, or let's say one team and the other. No, no, right. forget about that. Right. And I was looking at him and said, oh, yeah, you're so right. So I promise you, I will never say I'm a good person. Hmm. <laughs> so, if you ask me again, and I don't hear you well, and you say, "Are you a good person?" I'm going to say, "No, no, no, no." <laughs> uh, so, um, tell us a little bit about you. You have a couple of your albums, uh, including some of the Tango, uh, got uh, a Grammy uh, nomination, a Grammy, you know, so, uh, Grammy nomination. Yeah. So, sh could you share with us a little bit about? that please which album in particular the, the one i'm singing tangos yeah the tango uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. it, it actually was an album that the album was awarded for that in the tango uh -huh. category it happened that um i was with with friends uh i i i was singing well since the beginning of times for me mm -hmm. and then uh, at some point i was um including a few pieces, vocal pieces, with only piano and vocals mm -hmm. in some show. And, and once I, I was with a, a person who's a kind of mentor, well, no, mm -hmm. not kind, it's a mentor, and he said, why don't you make an album mm -hmm. with that kind of pieces? Because he also saw the reaction mm -hmm. um, audience and he said, you see that people are enjoying what you're doing uh, at, at the end or in certain moments with uh, your voice. And mm -hmm. why don't you make an album? Uh, at the beginning, I, I wasn't sure, but I, I started making compilations mm -hmm. of uh, pieces that I liked. And then I started making recordings. And at some mm -hmm. point, I found something mm -hmm. that it was um, interesting, which was I had the opportunity of making music with a lot of friends and mm -hmm. that I knew for, for decades in some cases mm -hmm. and making an album of songs because it's actually songs, mm -hmm. Django's songs, mm -hmm. then allowed me to share space, mm -hmm. work in space, work if, if, if we can use the, the word work, let's mm -hmm. say, making music together. Uh, I had so many people that I admire and I I like their company and their their jokes mm -hmm. and everything. And I said, well, this is an opportunity of making music together, which I basically I'm not going to have if I continue doing certain other things. Mm -hmm. And then I said, let's make music together with him. And I made a list of many friends and, mm -hmm. and sometimes not necessarily close friends, but people that I knew um, to start making collaborations. I also found an orchestra. And at some point I said, that's the album. The album is about oneness. It's about unity in certain aspects of my life. Mm -hmm. And and that's how it happened. And then other singers as well, who I knew, they said, oh, I want to sing in, in the album as well. Let's mm -hmm. do, make a duo, let's do something. And the album itself, grew up at some point that it became a monster. No, not, not a monster, but it became um, much more uh, difficult to handle, let's say, at some point for me. Mm. Um, because, uh, oh, I have so many people, so many ideas, many projects. It's just too much, too much mm. enthusiasm, enthusiasm mm. too much energy at some point. So that's why I'm, I'm talking about the difficulty in handling so many possibilities. It, yeah. I said, well, it, it's not going to be the white album. It's going to be a, an album of, let's uh, say, 80 songs. That's uh, So I, I started compressing the thing, and at some point I had it. Um, but the rest just happened in, in other fields that which I, I never are, uh, mm. let's say, under what I could say my control. If control exists, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, so the um, making the music was a tremendously enjoyable process, mm -hmm. which I had from the beginning to the end, a, a succession of beautiful events, hugs, kisses, exchanging kisses and hugs in many places in the world, you know, because, oh, what's going 
good to see you. Let's make music. Oh, let's do it. Yes, let's do it. Let's play. We started playing and we sounded terrible. Uh, and <laughs> okay, let's do it again. <laughs> yes, now we have it. Uh, and, you know, and I started also write, rewriting arrangements. I wrote all the arrangements for the orchestra for different things. Um, I started with something. I remember the first piece with the orchestra, and then um, I said, oh, I, um, I need to avoid these contemporary settings that I have in my mind that I'm always yeah. going to the same place. I'm going to you know, stretch my own limits, uh, yeah. which I think yeah. limits are great, you know, because yeah. otherwise, in my case, w without surrounds. Mm -hmm. And so it was also the perfect opportunity for me for using those instruments. Yeah. Uh, so basically, we had a lot of fun. Shall we play? Absolutely. OK, let's see. Whoops. I clicked something else. Whoops. <clears throat> let's bring it back Add to stream. OK, and go back to here. And then play, or just probably just play just a part of it, okay? Not the whole thing. Ooh! <laughs> wow. Amazing. I couldn't stop. You know, I was going to like uh, play part of it. It was like so good. Yeah, um, I was thinking about that. How, when, when is she going to stop the video? And then I said, oh, I can't no, stop. No. So I have a question, a compositional uh, point of a question. Um, like when she sings all of these, uh, sounded almost like um, improvisational, but that cannot be improvisation because the piano is doing the same thing and the other. Yeah, it's all written. They are all written. Wow. Yes. Now, another question is when you compose, do you write on a pad or do you write on computer? Um, I use both. You know, uh, I enjoy very much the handwriting in terms of it, if it's music or just, well, uh, just words. Uh, I made a lot of, of notes and I like a lot of the process of writing using my hands, fingers, my, my left hand in my case, which involves uh, getting dirty when I write, <laughs> because I, I write and then um, my hand gets dirty. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a condition yeah. for left-handed people, for lefties. Yeah. So. Lefty. You yeah. to, oh, yeah. you're one of these uh, smarty pants, lefty people. Uh, uh, I'm not I, in my case. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank some uh, some of our audiences. Thank you, um, Jeffrey. Uh, uh, James is being there with us. Uh, he said everybody looking and sounding really good. Um, glad to get two of you together. It's it's Jeffrey's. Um, um, you know, thank you, Jeffrey, for putting me together with Fernando. And uh, who else? Uh, you have somebody says hello is written almost like in Russian. I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, said hello. And then we have Argentina on the 360 said hello. And then we have U-C-H-I-M-I-C-H-E-L-I-N-I -I says hello. And then my friend Nick from um, Kinetic is, uh, with, is with us. Uh, Nick is always being very supportive of my show he you know he i i say can you come today he comes you know he comes to so many of my shows so oh by the way um i am ching ju i've been doing this um conversation with so and so with someone special since the lockdown which is march 27 and today is uh fernando your your episode number 47 i believe 47 yeah so oh, my lucky number. <laughs> so I do this uh, on Monday and Wednesday. Um, uh, every Monday, Wednesday, pretty much. Sometimes add a Saturday if people cannot make it. 
So thank you guys for、uh, tuning in, and I think if this is、uh, for me, this is my actually. You think I'm helping you, and actually you're helping me because、uh, this is my therapy. <laughs> It's like otherwise I go cuckoo, I go crazy, and my friend said. I thought you're already crazy. Oh yeah, I will be crazier if I don't do this show. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway,、um, yeah. So does anyone have any questions? We're almost in the end of our、uh, chatting. And and by the way, Fernando, I, I'm a violist. So yes,、uh, sir. You, I know that. You, yes, you, sir. you know,、uh, on、I、Monday. Yeah. yeah. I did my homework. I was checking you out, and I enjoyed very much all your works in all fields.、Um, I was scared when I saw you, beautiful, great musician, and one a filmmaker, and and everything. So I said, "Well, I have this great opportunity of meeting this person." <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And you know, by the way, on Monday, my guest was Lev Lev Zubrin, which yes, in, what, in your video he's playing、uh, in your music. Very talented yeah. musician, yeah. So、um, now、uh, let's see. My friend Nick says, "Amazing and groundbreaking." I have never heard a song like that. Interesting. And then Jeffrey said, "Indian scatter singing." So the yeah, it was really in. The lady was singing. Her name was very long.、Uh, she's very Indian, huh? Very Indian flavored folk song, maybe. Well, she uses the in in Indian in Carnatic music, Indian classical music.、Okay. They they sing using the names of the notes. What would be, let's say, in Italian, do re mi fa sol la si, and then they would sing using the song at the name of the note for each oh. song. Oh, for each oh. Song. oh. Let's say CDF, well, or whatever. If it's in English,、yeah. which is actually German, you know, but、yeah. then、okay. it became、yeah. right, English. And, and in the case、uh, of Indian、yeah. uh, classical music, they sing using their name, the names of the notes, which are also different in Sanskrit. Yeah, and, and of course they have so much, many m- more notes than we have.、Uh, but in this case, using the tempered scale, she's singing using those. Names of the notes.、Mm. Uh, there's no actually lyrics. There's、mm. somehow they they become lyrics.、Mm. And in terms of the melody, is what I wrote.、Um, that's why I also played in, in the piano.、Mm. And she read the part and learned the music by、mm. heart.、Mm. And did. And at some point, she's doing some improvisation in the middle. Yeah. Of yeah. Yeah. Doing her variations, which sounds very Carnatic. Carnatic.、Yeah. I mean. Indian classical、yeah. music from the south, in Bangalore, for example. She's from、yeah. Bangalore. I see. And then she's singing in a very Carnatic style.、And、so, yeah. So, so Fernando, because this pandemic, it must be devastating for you because you are a performing artist. Lots of concerts is cancelled. How do you deal with it? Like, what is what is the next step? Like, how do you? How do you? I don't know. What is your next project, and how did you deal? Oh, I mean, you're still dealing with it. There's no concert yet. Yes. Well, there's no concerts until next year, and of of course, I made、um, maybe I don't know five concerts this year, and suddenly everything was. I, I don't remember, but maybe or maybe ten, and it was over. I didn't go to Europe as usual, and. I, I would be in Europe right now, for example, in Asia, Japan, other places.、Um, I didn't go anywhere. So, in terms of what is the lockdown,、um, well, many times I, I was in lockdown, but <laughs> I think it was my own decision.、Uh, <laughs> solitude or social, but.、Uh, Uh, either for concentration or retreats, I do retreats、oh, very often. Anyway, nice, nice. and of course, this in this case is regulated by the external、uh, circumstances completely.、Uh, I don't feel devastated.、Mm. Uh, I don't.、Uh, 
I, I mean, this challenge is uh, something new. 